بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أوصيكم وإياي أولا بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Dear brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah. All praise due to Allah. We are here to remind each other to be faithful, to be obedient to Allah Rabbul Alamin, who deserves to be honored, who deserves to be worshipped, and who deserves to follow His command. Brothers and sisters, we have been discussing about knowledge we have been discussing about the importance of the adapt of seeking knowledge the responsibility of the scholars and the responsibility of student of knowledge today inshallah we like to remind ourselves not to take knowledge for granted and not to take thing for granted in life knowledge comes and go scholars come and go too Today they are here, tomorrow they are not with us anymore. Either they have other bigger responsibility, they have to go to other part of the world to convey the message of Allah to other people. So we should try our level best to grab the opportunity to get as much knowledge as we can from all the scholars that we know who are good, who is teaching us based on the Quran and Sunnah. Because it is too Childish, and we don't have the right value the knowledge of the scholar. The scholar may have differ in different thing, in different quality from one to another, but they are great scholars. Nobody can be perfect, and nobody can be the same like to another scholar. We know the great scholars in our time have left us. The great scholars that I mentioned, my sheikh, my teacher, Shabin Bas. Sheikh Saimin, Muhammad Nasr Albani, Sheikh Mukbil, a lot of great scholar who have left us. More will have to go soon. I always remind myself if there's any great scholar close by, try your level best to spend more time with them, seek their advice, learn from them. Wherever they are, for you to travel 10 miles, 30 miles, 60 miles, you cannot compare with the knowledge that they're going to give it to you. Good people, it's not easy to find. Scholar that love all of you are the scholar who care for you, who pray for you, who monitor your development. Now, this is not easy because today everybody is very busy. You are busy, the scholar also is busy. The scholars have more commitment than all of us. They have to travel more than us because the people need them more than us. So when they are there with you, grab the opportunity. It's a great enigma. Don't waste your time. Don't give excuses. I have no time. I'm busy. By doing that, we are going to miss the opportunity to get the most out from them. Sometimes children also take things for granted. Maybe their father, their mother are scholars, are people of knowledge. But the children take things for granted because their parent is so close to them. They don't pick up all the good knowledge from their parent. When their parent was teaching, they are not there to listen, to observe, to serve their parent. Because one of the best ways to seek knowledge is to serve the scholars. Like how the companions serve Prophet Muhammad and the other companions serve the other companions to seek the knowledge that they have learned from Prophet Muhammad By serving the scholar, you gain extra knowledge because whatever they do, whatever they say, whatever counseling that they give to other people, you are there to see, to hear, and to pick up all the most important valuable knowledge in Islam. Now the Prophet ﷺ did also remind us 
with a reminder that if Allah want to withdraw his knowledge from the people, if Allah want to withdraw his knowledge from the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not withdraw it, just snatching it away from the people, no. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will draw the knowledge that Allah have given to the scholar by the death of the scholar. The scholar also have to go back to Allah. I have learned under more than 10 scholars, alhamdulillah. And now only left one scholar who is still alive. Alhamdulillah. I always try to benefit from him, but the rest have gone back to Allah. I miss them a lot, but I always remember what they have taught me. Now what is important, brothers and sisters, when Allah take the life of the scholars, what is left behind to us is there will come a time that we have to learn from the ignorant people. We start to refer matters to them, to the people who don't have the sound knowledge, only based on their thinking, their feeling, not based on evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. Now when this happen, then you know what is going to happen to the Ummah. When they have any religious issue, they refer to these ignorant people that they have appointed as their reference, as their leader, as their scholar at the point of time because the great scholar is no more there. The true scholar is no more there. So they just pick up anybody whom they feel that they have some knowledge to be their reference point and their scholar. So the Prophet ﷺ remind us, when that time come, then a lot of ignorant people refer to ignorant scholars. We also have to call them scholar, but ignorant scholar. Who when you ask fatwa from them, the Prophet ﷺ tried to explain to us further, you ask them for religious verdict, they will only give you all the wrong wording, not based on the true teaching of Islam anymore. Just opinion upon opinion, their own rational, their own thinking. At the point of time, brothers and sisters, they themselves have turned astray and they will make all of us astray. Now when the Prophet say this in the Sahih Bukhari, it means that it's going to happen. This is what I'm trying to come to, that whatever the Prophet say is sure to happen. It is a matter of time and it's happening very, very fast. Like the Prophet said that before the end of time, there will be a lot of killing, a lot of killing among my Ummah. And there will come a time when the one who killed also do not know why they killed. And the one who was killed also do not know why they were killed. A lot of burning and all what the Prophet is saying is happening in front of us. In the Middle East, whatever you hear, whatever you've seen, all is what the Prophet have said earlier, 1,400 years ago. It's just to remind us, brother and sister, this is my humble reminder that if you come across any scholars that you are sure that they are a good scholar, please don't take them for granted. Grab the opportunity. Spend more time with them and seek their knowledge. Because knowledge, when they are gone, all the knowledge that Allah has given them is taken away. And that's how Allah withdraw the knowledge that Allah has given it to us. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also remind us to be thankful to Allah. La in shakartum la azidanakum. If you are thankful to Allah, you are thankful to the knowledge of Allah, you are thankful that the scholars still exist around you, you must grab the opportunity to learn from them, to ask them things that you need to know. Because this is one of the best ways to seek knowledge is 
to ask them what you want to know first. Because sometimes scholar may not know what you really need most. So you know what you think is important for your life. Ask them so that they can share their knowledge with you. If you don't take this opportunity, wala in kafartum inna azabila shadid, then Allah will take it back. If you are not grateful to the scholar that is near to you, near to your area, close by, you always give excuses, you have no time, you are busy, you thought that you are more busy than a scholar, no. The scholars are more busy than all of us. Brothers and sisters, we'll come back to you after the short break. The students of Islamic International School Chennai. Islam, the religion of peace. Islam is the only solution to the problems of humanity. The Islamic Sharia is complete, it's perfect. Vision focused, faith firm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, enter into the religion of peace. We are the followers of the religion of peace. Ability outstanding. The Quran from cover to cover is a message of peace. And the last and, and, and final is such is manual for the human being. being. It is the glory of the Quran. Quran. Watch Wafa Sarfaraz, Zunaira Ayman, Sahib Saab, Nashin Zara, Hasib Khan, Fahad Abdul Rahman, Rida Tabassum, Sayyid Zaid. And Abid Baris. La ilaha illallah. There is no deity worthy of worship except the Most As these righteous and dedicated dais from Islamic International School, Chennai, present the way to achieve true success in Ambassadors of Islam. Next on Peace TV. Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah. And may Allah strengthen our iman and give us more sabr. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us more committed to become the seeker of knowledge, to become the student of knowledge. Brothers and sisters, the hadith that I've shared with you earlier, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to take back his knowledge, he just invites the scholar to go back to him by the death of the scholar. And on the left, this ignorant leader, that when you have any religious matter, you refer it to them, they will give you worthy without any knowledge anymore. No more from what Allah said and what the Prophet said. Call Allah, call Rasulullah, no more. It's ra'i, 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 opinion. My opinion, I think is like this. I think is like that. This is better. Which is better? Our way or Allah's way? But because they are people of no knowledge anymore. Maybe they are leaders. They are good in the worldly matters. But they are ignorant about Allah's ruling. Their knowledge is better than Allah. So they put their feeling, they put their idea, they put their thinking above what Allah said. Where all the wise scholars, all the prophets, when any issue come to them, None of them give their opinion. They wait for the divine guidance from Allah to guide them. And then they'll give the wadiq and the people will act according to the wadiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why they were guided. They have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah even warned us, you know, through the Prophet sallallahu that this group of people, when they have been appointed, to mislead the people because they themselves are misled. They don't have evidence, don't have hujjah and burhan. And they are going to mislead a lot of innocent people. The alarming situation is this saying the Prophet is happening today. Even there are a lot of scholars around, but they are more ignorant people than scholars. And there are some group of people who are the enemy of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, being considered as scholars too, by the public who are very innocent. They make a joke, they make fun of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When people call them to follow the Sunnah, when the great scholar 
the scholar who loved the Prophet Wasallam highlight the importance of following the Sunnah. You have this group of people who just learn something from here and there, trying to champion themselves and telling the people, if people are so particular about following the Sunnah, call them to ride on camel. Don't ride on cars, motorbike, and ride on camel. Can you imagine, brother, what kind of statement is this? They should be ashamed if they don't follow the sunnah. They are ready to follow the sunnah because they are so deep-rooted with the bid'ah and because they like to please the people, not please Allah. At least, at least fear Allah for the sake of the truth. At least you give way to others who dare to speak up the truth and you pray, may other public follow them. But not to be little and create fitna within the people of knowledge. And this is happening in our time. It's very alarming. And the worst thing is sometimes, this kind of people is being promoted. Because the public are ignorant. They like people who play around with religion. People who please them more than pleasing Allah and the Prophet. They thought that people who follow the Quran and Sunnah, they are backward. They are orthodox. They are not civilized. You know, and they create fitna to them. What is civilization? Give one simple example. To the woman, they say civilization is to undress yourself. Don't cover yourself. That is called civilization. And you know, in any kind of gathering, brother and sister, if you look at what is happening in reality, all the men will come in with all the dress covered, long sleeve long trousers, socks, bow tie, so well covered. All the men, that is called civilization. This is real men. Well covered, well dressed. But the woman, the opposite. When they come to any kind of gathering, official kind of gathering, they come half naked. As though that the woman must dress like that to show that they are civilized lady. This is to show that how backward the woman today. That's how the woman dressed before Islam. Islam came and changed the lifestyle of the woman to be more civilized. You know what happened in the early age, the cavemen, they hardly covered themselves. Male and female the same. When men start to get civilized, where civilization come in, they grow, they change, they start to cover more and more. And now we are saying that if you don't cover yourself, it's more civilized than you cover yourself. Something is very wrong with our value. Something is very wrong with our understanding. And who is saying this? This is the, what the Prophet said. The ignorant people who use whatever means they have through the media to tell people that is called modern. This is called civilization, using term to mislead other people. And that's why you see a lot of young girls, young daughter of us, they don't know what is shame anymore. They have no shyness. They don't care. They can go out at any time without mahram, how they dress, no big deal. They really want to expose themselves to the danger that only Allah knows best. And something bad happened, then we start to blame other people. Of course, other people also is involved, but also they are the cause. We cannot deny that, brothers and sisters. Every action, there's a chain of reaction. If you want to be protected, you must protect yourself first. You cannot just open your door, you don't lock your door, your window, and you say, Tawakkal Allah. You must do your level best. Protect yourself. Do what Allah wants you to do. That's why Islam is here to protect us from turning astray and to protect our dignity. Now this is what happened, brothers and sisters. We are sorry to say that what is happening today is we have also to say that it is the faults of the media. The media know what is happening around us. They know how dangerous the situation we are living in. But they don't care. Everything is because of 
dollar and cent. What they care is money. Money is more important to them than life. They expose all the negative thing to make it positive. And it's very dangerous. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection, brother and sister. Don't let the knowledge of Allah vanish when we have the opportunity to grab it, to take it. And the way to take it is to get close to the scholars. Don't get far away from them. You have spent a lot of time for yourself, wasting a lot of your time with your friend. It's time for you to waste more time to enrich yourself with the knowledge that please Allah, that knowledge that is sure to save you here to your hereafter. The only knowledge that can save us here and the hereafter is the knowledge of wahyu, not nafs, wahyu. That means it's the Holy Quran. And the guidance, the example from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Sunnah. And always remember, brother and sister, when you talk about sunnah, don't belittle sunnah. You try your best. Of course, sometimes we are weak. We may not be able to follow the whole teaching of Islam. Even Allah have commanded us to do so. Ya yuhallazina amanu udkhulu fissilmi kafah. Oh, you who believe. Enter Islam totally. That's what, not partially. But we may not be able yet. Try your level best and try to get close to scholars that can help you, that can make things clear to you and make you understand the beauty of Islam, why Allah wants to do this, for what reason. By doing that, brother and sister, you will never regret. Maybe now you feel, oh, it's not important, I'm still young. Yes. Did Allah say you will die only when you get old? No. You can die also when you are young. Do you want to have a bad ending and regret in the future? No more regret. One, you have a bad ending, it's gone. So if you want to regret, you regret now. If you want to change, you've got to change now. Don't wait until tomorrow. Our tomorrow is our hereafter. So please, brothers and sisters, when the chance is there, grab the chance. Grab the opportunity because before the scholar will leave you. Either the scholar will move to another country, migrate to another country, because good scholars will keep on moving because good scholars have big responsibility. When the people need any help, they have to respond. So it's important for us to be thankful to Allah if you know that there is some good scholar close by to your area. And if your parent is your scholar, mashallah, it's Allah extra blessing to you. You have the scholar yeah, in the house. So whatever the father wants to do, just listen, because the good father will never mislead the children. They will give you the best of the best. If your mother is a scholarly woman, she will give you the best of the best. They are not going to fail you. Your friend can fail you. Other people can cheat and lie to you, but not your parents. We know this, brothers and sisters. So Alhamdulillah, if your parents are a learned person, learn from them, brothers and sisters. Learn from them. Whatever they want you to do, just do it and you will see the result. At the end of the day, mashallah, the one that is going to benefit and profit is you. And inshallah, we can also benefit the environment, the ummah, and our parents, inshallah. Until we meet again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people who will grab the opportunity to acquire knowledge as much as we can. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Al-Qur'an yuwahiduna li tariq al-khayri yuwahiduna